Hit it. Hit it. All right, it's time to make the fan trellis square of this wonderful crochet stitch sampler baby blanket. What's really great about the fan trellis square is that it incorporates a little bit of lace into the blanket, which is perfect for little baby fingers and toes because they like to stick their little fingers and toes through the stitches and, and mess around with them. So this is a great little stitch to add to the baby blanket. It also adds a little bit of ventilation to the blanket because you know, those little babies, they get a little hot and steamy sometimes. Um, one thing that I will caution you with this particular stitch pattern, you might want to drop down a hook size just for this pattern because it is lace and it will stretch a little bit more. So even though you might have used say a six millimeter hook for the rest of the blanket, in this pattern you might want to drop down to a five, if not a 4.5. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit when we discuss the, the measurement of the blocks and the gauge, but I just wanted to give you a heads up right now. If we take a look down here. We're looking at the blanket here and you can see there's a lot of open space between the stitches. I have a piece of paper stuck behind the stitch square here so you can see um, the contrast between the green and the white. And you can see the trellis part. I mean, it's right here. And that's just made up of chain stitches. And then over here, we have a multiple of double crochets that we are gonna work into the space of chain stitches that we've created before. We are not going to work into the actual chain so we will not have the butt of the stitch hanging it out it will be the actual stitch it looks nice and clean and crisp and it's just a beautiful stitch pattern so let's get started I'm gonna scooch this up out of the way and I'm gonna grab my red heart with love yarn and I'm using a size six millimeter hook today just to show you what's going on um, as I said if you're gonna make this for a square for your finished blanket it might be that you need to drop down a couple of hook sizes to make sure that the squares all match up in the very end I have the pattern over here and it's from the critch, <laughs> the critch, ha ha ha, it's funny. The pattern over here from the crochet stitch sampler baby blanket, it's the fan trellis stitch. It incorporates the chart and the written instructions, whichever one you wanna follow is great. For today's purposes, I'm gonna follow the chart. So this is an advanced beginner stitch pattern. I feel like by this point in the blanket, you should be able to follow along with me in the chart, so hopefully I can help you out. If you're not confident enough in the charts, that's okay. That's why I have the words down there. You can absolutely read along with the words and follow along with the words in the chart with me um, as we go through the video. You won't be lost, I promise. We're gonna begin here with the in-class block. So we're gonna chain 24. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Aren't you glad you can see I count to 24? If you need a refresher on how to do the slip knot or the chain, please check out the other videos on this channel. If we read on down through here or up here, you can see that we're gonna do a single crochet, that's what that little cross stitch is, into the second chain from hook. So I'm gonna go one, two, I never count the one that is on my hook and I work a single crochet. Now I can follow along and I can see I have one, two, three, four, five chains and then I do a single crochet over here. So those five chains make it so that when I skip one, two, three chains from my foundation chain and then work into the fourth, I'm gonna get that lattice look of the stitch that we like so much. Two, three, four, five. Now I'm gonna skip one, two, three. I'm gonna go into the fourth chain and I'm gonna complete a single crochet. Going along, continuing down this row, I can see that I do that until I get down to where there are two chains left. So I'm gonna do that a couple more times. Two, three, four, five. What we're doing here, one, two, three, four, we're building these lattice chain five sections for us to build our stitch pattern around them. So one, two, three, four, five. If you decide, you know, I want these a little bit more narrow or whatever it may be, you could absolutely chain four instead of five. If that's something you wanna play around with and mess around with designing your own stitch pattern, please go ahead and see how that works for you. One, two, three, four, five. And vice versa, if you decide that you wanna make them a little bit bigger to make it even lacier, you could do that as well. 
Um, I want to point out too that for the blanket we are using a worsted weight yarn, but if you decide, you know Marley, I really love this stitch pattern, but I want to use a thinner weight yarn or maybe a plant fiber instead of a wool or an acrylic because it gets beautiful drape, the combination of lace stitches, lace crochet stitches, and a, and a plant fiber like a cotton or a bamboo, uh, it's just beautiful. I would say that you should absolutely give that a try. Now here I am, I'm at the end of my foundation row, and you can see I came up to where I had two stitches left, so I chained two and I did a double crochet. So in the chart, this is where it would be, came up to where I have two chains left, so I chained two and I did a double crochet in that last chain. So I pump up here, to, or jump up here to row two, and it looks like I have a chain one, and then I work a single crochet into that, that double crochet, which means that single crochet is going to be the first stitch of my next, or the last stitch of my next row. So I'm gonna do my single crochet, and I'm gonna grab a stitch marker, and I'm gonna stick it in right there, just so that I know that's where the, my last stitch is gonna be. That gives me a nice clean edge. When you're working with patterns that you're going to um, sew together, it's very important that you get very clean edges. It makes for a wonderful finishing technique. Looking at the chart again, I can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets all in that chain five space. And this is where I said, you do not have to work into the actual chain stitch. I am going into this big gaping hole right here. I yarn over, see that big hole? I'm just gonna put my hook right in the hole and complete my double crochet. I've gotta do seven of them in there. Don't be shy, get them all in there. If they start to squish up a little bit, um, you, can, you can scoot them along. Look at that, I could scoot those over, no problem. I mean, I could get probably 15 in there if I wanted to crowd them all in there. This is one of the greatest things about working around chain stitches instead of um, into the chains is you can mess around with uh, how many stitches you put into a chain space. Now I have seven right there. You can see I've squished them all over there so I, mean, I could squish them back a little bit and make them a little bit more uniform. That's not a problem. And then if I look at the chart I can see I'm going to do a single crochet into that chain five space, chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space. If you are one of those people who are like, you know, I really just want a little bit of stability instead of working into the space for this section, because this is the lattice section, you absolutely could go through the middle of that chain five to make it so that it stays in place. It's up to you. I like to make things really easy, so I like to be able just to go into a big old hole and uh, create a stitch. So I'm just gonna do that. So right there, that's what I've done. I've done my single, chained five, and I singled. And then I come over here into this space here, and I have to do seven double crochets once again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pretty easy. And then I'm going to jump over here, and, and according to the chart, I'm going to do a single crochet, maybe, chain two. Now here's a symbol we haven't come across before. It's a long T with two slash marks. That's a symbol for a treble crochet. If you need a refresher on how to do a treble, go over to the beginner basics section and you'll find a video on treble crochet. Um, so you'll get all the information you need right there. In the meantime, let me show you how to do a treble. The two slash marks on the symbol give us a first clue that we're gonna be yarning over our hook twice. So we yarn over our hook two times before we do anything else. And then we're going to go into the single crochet, which was the first stitch we completed and we're going to yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Now the reason we have that treble crochet over there is because we need the height of this section to meet the height, height of what this section would be in this section. So doing that treble makes it so that the end of our stitch down there gives us the same height that we need. On the next row, we will actually have a treble crochet over here at this end, and it'll equal out the, um, some, it'll make the, the whole thing symmetric. So I have a chain one, I'm going to turn, I'm going to do a single crochet right there, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my other marker that I haven't used yet. Ah, it's got a tag along right there. Don't need you. 
All right, so I'm gonna stick that one in there. Again, that's my clue that that's the end of my row for the next time I get to it. I'm gonna chain five, and this is very similar to like the chain five that we did in the beginning because we're creating those chain five trellis spaces again. Only this time, instead of working into the chains down here, we're gonna be working our single crochets into the actual double crochet stitches and the chain five space, okay? So what we're gonna do here is I chain five, I'm skipping all of this. So these chain twos, this single crochet, this double crochet, and I'm going to the second double crochet of the seven. I'm gonna put a single right there. I'm gonna chain five. I'm gonna skip three doubles, one, two, three, go into the next double, and I'm gonna do a single crochet. Chain five. Now I'm up to my space. See my big chain five trellis space? I'm gonna put a single crochet right there. Chain five. I'm gonna skip these, these chains there, skip that single crochet, skip that double, go into the next double and put a single. Chain five. Skip three doubles, go into the next one and do a single. And this is where we're gonna finish up our row to make it so that it's symmetrical. We chain two and we're gonna have another treble crochet right into our marked stitch. So I yarned over twice, pulled up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. I'm gonna extend that up a little bit and I'm gonna turn this over. And you can see here, if it's right underneath the chart, we have this nice trellis right here, and that's represented right there. Nice trellis right here, it's represented right there. Then we have all these chain five space trellises, and that's what's represented right here. You would continue on repeating rows two and three for this pattern to get the height that you want your block to be. If you wanted um, your block larger, you can follow along with the stated number of chains you need in the pattern to make all the blocks the same for this baby blanket. Or if you want to do something on your own, make it a multiple of 12 stitches and you should be able to have a multiple of those span stitches all the way along and you'll be happy, good to go. Um, I would love to see if you use this stitch pattern for something other than the blanket, but until then, I hope you do make this square for the blanket and because it just really rounds it all out. Now you know how to make the fan trellis stitch.